can't hear me. Let me see if you're you're hearing me. Hold on one second. Sound is good, Steve? Okay. You should be seeing a wrist slide right now on under slideshow, okay? Hit slideshow and then you should be seeing a wrist. And then the last example would be with stock options. If you paid five bucks, your wrist would be at two dollars with a three hundred dollar wrist. That's what we do do on all the trades that we use at DTI. A little bit about my background. And I graduated from the University of Georgia. It's in Athens, Oklahoma City Law School in Oklahoma City, and I was an officer in the United States Air Force. I got started in the brokerage industry and became a, a vice president of Smith Barney. I'm currently a member of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and in, uh, I think it was around late 1990, I got selected to get a Globex terminal. There was only 50 of those put out in a permit program that it had at the time. So I was very fortunate to, at the start of electronic trading to have the Globex terminal. Okay. I've uh, got three books: Winning the Day Trading Game, The Markets Never Sleep, and Trade to Win. And the first book sort of tells how I got started and some of the theories I still use today. Uh, and then, of course, the markets never sleep and trade to win. Uh, our company, we've been in business for a long time. We're one of these companies that, uh, you know, we tell you what we're going to do, and we do what we're going to say. There's our headquarters in Mobile. We do have a bricks and mortar operation. Uh, it's located in Mobile, Alabama, and uh, it's uh, a great building to train people about the market. We also have a mobile app that's available on the Android Play Store or in the Apple Store, and you go www.dtitrader.com slash app, okay? What we do with this is we put out some, of the night, some things tonight. I'm going to be covering market insights, and so with this app, uh, we're able to put out current insights each day to you uh, the people that have the mobile app. All right, tonight I'm going to talk about 30 trading insights. I'll talk about a little bit of, of fear in trading and, of course, my approach. Now, this Saturday at 9 o'clock, I'll be doing a more extensive webinar on overcoming fear, and you'll get an invitation for that. This Saturday. All right, let's start out with 30 insights that uh, I put together from all these years of trading, and then they might help you uh, as a trader to think about some of these things. The first one on the first day of the year, on the first day of the year, I record the prices of all the different markets, and I take these prices and I'll look at it when we get this far into the year. To determine trends and see what you know what the market's doing. Let me give you an example. How many people know where gold opened the first uh, the first trade day of the year? Anybody know that where gold opened? Right on my wall inside my office, I have a picture of the first trading day of the year, and and gold was around twelve hundred dollars. Tonight, gold's at 12.73. So you'd say, Tom, are you long or short gold? I'd say I'm long gold. That's simple, but it comes from this insight number one. In fact, if you would like a copy of what I've got in my office, you can send me an email at tbuzz, T B U Z, at DTI Trader. Let me do this for you. There you go, Adam's got it. And we'll give you a copy of everything that I'm looking at on the first day of the year and an analysis with where everything is heading from here. And that's very handy to people that are following the longer term trends. 
I see Bernice out there. Hello, Bernice. Long time no see. Bernice is from California. So insight number one, record prices on the first day of the year. Okay, insight number two, when prices are trading at their highs, they tend to make higher highs. That's sort of been the story of the second quarter of the year. Prices have been making higher highs and until today had pretty much been nonstop as the market made record high after record high. Now, this is very interesting. And this is an insight that might help you as you move in on July the 4th. July 4th is a few weeks off, but the market usually reverses its trend after July the 4th. So the trend's been higher. I would expect the market to reverse that upward trend after July the 4th. And it typically will, will stay reversed until you get to Labor Day. That's just an insight you can use to better trade. Now, this one's been used so many times over the years by me. When a stock crosses 100, it will typically go to 110. The most recent example I can think of on this insight is an ETF called ERX. It's an oil company, oil, oil and natural gas ETF. I remember when it crossed 100, I told people it's going to 110, and shortly thereafter, it was at 110. Actually, right now, today, it hit a new record high at 119. But this insight will help you identify opportunity in the market. Okay? All right, here's another one. At 6 a.m. in the morning, the most important price for the DAX, and I, and I trade the DAX, the most important price is that 6 o'clock price, and you can look at that for a gauge of how the market's going to open. If you were watching the DAX this morning, we, uh, we turned below that price, and you saw what happened during the day today as the market sold off. I always tell people, don't think of trading as one trade, but a series of trades. And what you want to do is continually learn from each of those trades and try to get better at this game of trading. It's not an easy game, but it's a game that you can win if you will study, study the market, study yourself. Insight number six. All right, the market's open 24 hours. The market's trading right now. Right now, our focus on the 24-hour markets on Asia, and the market right now, if you look at it, looks like it's trying to stabilize. It's trying to stabilize. Uh, that's central time zone, Chuck. Central time zone. In that first book, I got a whole chapter saying time is central. Now, here's what it looks like if you map it out on a 24 hour basis the different times and the time segments around the globe. And you will find that trends tend to go with and tie into these foreign markets, Asia tonight, and then Europe in the morning. Now, the U.S. is divided into two days. We have the early U.S., which is the New York side, and then we have the California side as the afternoon side. But if you'll map out these trends, you can see some pretty discernible trends just using this clock here to tell you when they start and when they end. All right. I always tell people, don't really worry about what direction the market's going. Just go with it. So let me give you, give you a clue here. How many people trade Apple? Apple computer. How many people trade Apple? Okay, June, Apple just had a 7 to 1 split. Has the trend been higher or lower since the split? No, actually, it's been higher. And since it's been trending higher, if you want to estimate how high you think that trend will last, 
then you look at the previous high of Apple, which was what? 7 what? How high did Apple go prior to the split? Anybody remember how high it went? You can divide that number by 7, and it will tell you where the current target of Apple is. You look back at Apple's absolute highs in the 700s. So it basically tells you Apple's probably going to 110. Using that insight, stocks over 100 going to 110, and using the insight that Apple should trade and continue up to those levels. All right, the news. There's 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 really some major news you need to know about. Eight. News events happen during the year from the Federal Reserve. They're called the Fed meeting. They happen eight months out of the year. Every month, there's a major news announcement around the first Friday. This has happened 12 times. So there's 20 major news events, economic news that come out, and you need to know when those dates are. Usually around the first Friday for the 12th. And then, of course, the Fed puts out on its website the Fed news announcement. So you need to know, know that this is a market changing news event. It happens 20 times a year. Okay. There's other news that can become important too, and that is identified. One of the best sources to go to is called Barons.com. They give you a, a star. A red star that tells you it's some market moving news and it lays it out for you, which you know is very helpful to you if you're trying to figure it out. You got Barons.com economic account. All right, every Wednesday crude oil comes out. Now, if you think about it, is crude higher than this Wednesday's announcement? This is known as a breakout week for crude. Because crude is higher after the inventories were published on Wednesday, and it's basically saying you're going to see probably 110 on crude. Again, that $100 rule playing out in crude. Now, this is something about crude. I learned this many years ago that they take, and, and when they pay out production checks to people that have pieces of oil wells, they pay it out based on the closing price of the month. So therefore, there's a tendency, and it's a slight one, for it to close down on the last day of the month. These are, these are the kind of insights that you learn. They give you a little edge when you're trading in the market. Now, there's 48 hours after a Fed announcement that allows you to have a good trend trade. And I tell people, Figure out when the Fed's going to have an announcement, and the next three days after that, you can identify a pretty good trade in the market. It's a very good trend. And you always know it starts around Fed time. Now, here's one that we, we traded every year since the year 2000, uh, the night of the presidential election. It's a great trade. If you go back to the year 2000, do y'all remember what was happening in 2000 in the presidential markets? Do y'all remember that? Where they couldn't decide who had won? Well, it was so funny because all you had to do that night was turn on your TV set, and every time they said Florida went to Bush, you bought it, and every time they said Florida went to Gore, you sold it. I remember we made a lot of points on that night, and we've done it ever since. So. The next one will be 2016. Now here's a good one that's coming up. The day after Thanksgiving has one of the highest percentage up days of the year. So you can't get up at 8.30 and make this trade. You can get up about 6 and get ahead of everybody that's going to figure out about this trade and get in front of them. And we do that every Thanksgiving. We have a 6 o'clock webinar to kick off. Thanksgiving Day Bonanza. That's the Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. 
always tell people, be open-minded. You, you never know what you might learn, no matter how many years you've been trading. You might learn that how the DAC 6 o'clock number will help you trade the early morning. You might learn about the $100 rule. You might learn about the 7-Eleven rule. There's always things that you can learn by listening. The week of December 26th through January 1st is the best, best trading week of the year. Most people that you ask about this will tell you, hey, I'm on vacation. But if you ever want to catch a trend, you ought to be there the day after Christmas and watch that trend from 26th to the 1st of the year. It's always a good trend trade that time. Now, today's market correction that came down was nothing. We didn't go 2.5% down, which means that you'll probably have a snapback rally tomorrow. And that's what I'd be looking for going into tomorrow. When overmarked prices have risen 2.5% during the session, don't go short. But if they go down 2.5%, then you probably have a breakdown. 2.5% is usually a good band to carry around the market. Now here's how you tell if you got good stops. If you were if you were in an up day, one percent or higher, and your stock didn't move, chances are you might not have a good stop. And this is how you can test your portfolio anytime you get a one percent move. Now with these insights, there are a lot of common sense things about it. But it gets you to think about things and put memory memory blocks for you to think about when you see these things. Okay? And that's why I like insights about the market. Here's another one. If you ever gonna try to trade, you gotta make a decision. And you have to accept the decision and move on. I'll give you a decision I made today. I'm long Google. Anybody here trade Google? Anybody trade Google? Well, I'm long Google, and today it was going against me, and I decided to hold the position. And people say, well, Tom, why are you holding the position? I said, because I've made a decision that I've got a limited play in Google, and I think it's going to 575, and I think today's correction in the market was a general market correction. Google went down, and I said, once I get a 7-Eleven reversal, Google will go up. And I think that's happening right now as we're talking. So I made a decision, and I'll see the outcome of that decision tomorrow. Now this goes back to if the market moves up and your stock doesn't move up, it's probably time to get out. Yeah, let me see if I can make it make it louder. Testing one, two, three. Testing. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. John, is that any louder? Adam, do you know anything else to make it louder? How about you, John? Is that any better for you? Let me try something here on my end. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Is that any better? John, it might be on your end because it seems like everybody else is hearing pretty good. Okay? Stocks have been the most bullish, tend to follow the fastest during a downtrending day. And so today, a lot of stocks have had a lot of gains 
had a pretty down, uh, a pretty good down day. This is a good rule to keep in mind. Always take your losses more quickly. Now again, what is the number, the maximum risk I'm going to do on a trade, whether it's a future option or stock? I'll tell you about one I got on right now. Has anybody ever heard of a stock called FireEye? The symbol's F-E-Y-E. I bought FireEye at $31 a share, and I placed my initial stop at 28 FireEye today closed at 35 and a half. This is an example of the value of the $3 rule. And this happens all the time. $3 is enough if you learn how to position and structure a trade that you ought to be risky. I always use a stop in any trade I do because I want to get out of the market if I'm wrong. Would y'all like me to show you how to set up a trade using this $300 rule with uh, crude oil? Maybe I maybe I ought to do that just to show you. Okay? Let's see, I got enough time to do it. Let me, let me bring up my roadmap. So I'm about to do this trade, so I might as well show you. Let me project. Let me know if you can see the road map. No problem, John. Okay, can everybody see the road map there? Let me change it to crude oil. This is our software that we use to analyze, to analyze the market. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to look at crude. First thing that you want to do, now remember, we're only going to risk $300. So how many, how many cents is that on crude oil if we risk, uh, if we risk 30 cents? That's 30 cents, right? Okay. So let's find a trigger price on crude. If you look at crude, and here's the symbol on crude, right here. If you look at the high on crude, The high on crude is 106.94, right? And it's currently at 106.92. So if I set a stop order, is everybody familiar with the stop order? If I set a stop order on crude, then, and I buy it at 96, means it's got to go up to fill, where where would my stop be on crude if I do that? I would take I would take 106.96 minus 30, and my stop would be at 66, right? So the way that would work then is place a buy stop at 96, okay, and then once filled, I would place that stop order and I'd let crude go. Now, let's see what my potential on this trade is. If you look over at my compass, we call it, and you got a dollar 17 as your, or not dollar 17, a dollar 25 as your average crude range, which is the typical range crude goes in a day, and I take crude, and I look at its low, look at its low, which is 106.76, and I add 106.76, I add a dollar, 
and a quarter to that, which takes me to 10801, and if I buy at 107, excuse me, 106.96, by the way, I'm going to be buying it right now, okay, at 106.96, I'll be buying it. If I take that, then I have the potential in this trade to make, to make how much money? Risking $300. This is over the course of tonight and tomorrow's trading day. How much money can I make on that $300 risk? So, I would make, if I bought it at 96, I'd make a dollar and five. Roughly about a thousand bucks, Kenneth, right? So, then you divide the $300 into the thousand. That would be about over three times my risk, which would be a good structured trade. Everybody see how I did that? That's what proved. And I'm actually... Well, let me look at crude. 106, 95. I thought I saw 96, but 95. I'm not in yet. Okay. In fact, I'm waiting to connect and place an order. But anyway, that's, I'm going to do that trade tonight. And I, the stop I'm using is 30 cents. Now, that's strategy number one. Strategy number two would be at 10 o'clock tonight, because I'm going to go to bed sometime tonight, right? At 10 o'clock tonight, I'm going to raise my stop to, the, to 15 cents and reduce my risk down, okay, to a $150 risk before I go to bed. And that's a, that's a typical trade that I might do and I am doing tonight. So I, I'm buying at 106.96. At 10 o'clock tonight, I'll raise my stop 15 cents below that number, and then I'll go to bed and see how I wake up in the morning. I did that same trade last night and made over $1,000 a contract just on that one crude trade. That meter one. Put it on in Asia, took it off in the U.S. Now, if you hear someone say, hey, you don't go broke taking profit, yeah, that's how you do go broke. Because you don't take profits for five or six cents on this trade. You take profits when it gets to your objective. And so that's why you have to have what I call a plan before you ever make a trade. I've agreed that I'm willing to give him $300 if I'm wrong, and I've agreed I'm going to take $1,000 if I'm right. So if I did that trade 10 times, let's do the math on it. I'm going to take this out. I did that trade 10 times. And I lost three times, I would lose how much money over that three times? 900 bucks. And if I made money on seven times, and let's say I didn't average a thousand, but I averaged 500. For whatever reason, I averaged 500. I would bring in 3,500 in revenue minus 900 in expenses, and I would make $2,400 with that same simple structure. Does that interest people to learn stuff like that? That's what we do at DPI. That's a good example. I always know where I'm going to get out if I'm right and where I'm going to get out if I'm wrong. Now, How big of an account would you have to have to stay within this rule? A $3,000 account, right? So as long as you got $3,000 in your account, you can live $300. That's how this rule works. Now, if you learn the setups you're looking for, and I call them the, the ones to go to setups, you'll do a lot better in trading. This crude trade is a, is a 
natural trade in the summer. You can usually put it on in Asia. And you got this kind of setup that's above its opening. It's trying to move higher and try to take advantage of it going higher by using stop orders. Over trading. My whole career, this has been one of my biggest weaknesses as a trader. Who else has problems over trading? There's a certain personality type that this is just a natural way you lose money. You don't quit when you're ahead. This is one of my biggest problems. So I've got some timeout rules. Okay? And the timeout rules come into play if I have two, two or more losses in a row. And if I have three or more losses in a row, I quit trading. It never gets better when you're having a day like that. So might as well cut it off early. And that's some days like that, it's better just to stay in bed rather than trade. There's days like that in trading. Okay. I told you this Saturday that I was going to do a webinar on overcoming fear. I think everybody's got fear in trade. I still have fear in trade. Like I got fear in trading that you'll make this you'll make this oil trade and then you think you got everything that you know about it, then you'll try to do it on your own. That's some of my fear. That's why I sometimes reluctant to share it. By the way, I just got filled on crude. I'm long crude right now. We'll see how this baby plays out. Okay. Well, anyway, I've got some some things you can do, and I'll get into more details about that this Saturday. There's a lot of types of fear. Fear of loss, obviously, right at the forefront if you're a trader, right? Like, man, if I buy this crude, I might lose 300 bucks. Yeah, you might. So don't do it if you're afraid of doing that, because that could be a real possibility. But my fear on this trade is if I don't make it when it tells me to make it. I don't care what I'm doing. You know, I'm doing a webinar right now. I'm focused on you instead of trading, but yet I know I got to make that trade when it sets up. Knowledge is another fear of a lot of people. They go, well, I don't know how to place a stop on it. Well, I don't know how to trade futures. Futures scare me. How many of you can handle a $300 loss? Let me just ask that question on the surface in trading. If I said, hey, can you handle a $300 loss? Can, can you move on to your next trade? Can you think about your next trade if you have a uh, $300? Okay. Well, attaining knowledge is very valuable. Outside influence. Hey, I listen to this guy tonight. You're talking to the guy you respect some other guy, and you say, hey, he only risks $300. And you say, well, that's impossible to only risk $300, okay? And, uh, Rox, if you'll send uh, an email, Adam will send you a tape that really explains futures to you, if you'd like it. Adam, what email are you wanting to send it to to give him that tape? There you go. Send, it, send an email, request it, he'll give you a tape that explains it. Everybody should learn about futures. I trade futures options and stocks. Everybody should learn about futures. All right, solutions to fear. Success is one solution, right? And you got to risk an amount on your loss that you're comfortable with. 300 for me is a very comfortable risk point. $300 is not. I tell my subscribers to risk $300. Now, lack of knowledge. Where can you get knowledge? You can get knowledge at a lot of educational sites. CMEgroup.com is a world full of, of information about trading on that site. Barons.com has a world of great articles about fundamentals. Here's one for options, and I found this by accident, but the optionsplaybook.com is a very good instructional playbook. It's free. You can go to that website and learn about options. It's a 
good ones. DTI Traders, our home site. We have a lot of good videos and tapes on there. And I got to stop for a second. Are y'all seeing crude, by the way? Does everybody see crude? Let me go back and show you crude. You got my attention. One oh seven sixteen. Let's do some math here. Where'd I buy it at? Where'd I buy crude at? Okay, one oh six ninety six is currently one oh seven thirteen. How much money is that? Dale, how much money am I up on that crude contract per contract? Now, how many people would like to learn how to do that? What time did I put that trade on? What time did I put that trade on? Let's think about it. What time did I put that trade on? How many minutes have I been in that trade? This is what I do as a professional trader. I identify these opportunities. Five minutes. Good trade. Anyway, let's go back to the slide. I thought I'd show that to you. Anyway, uh, DTITrader.com. Trading Pub's got a bunch of good. It is sweet. Isn't it, Rocks, to know how to do this stuff? How many people dream about being able to do stuff like that? I used to dream about it when I was starting out. Well, you got to change, Rock. You got to change. You got to get the right instructor. You know, I liken this to playing golf. If somebody shows you the wrong way to hit a golf ball, you're never going to get any better. But if somebody shows you the right way to trade, you will get better. Anyway, keep distractions to a minimum. Know your personal schedule and schedule important news events. Trust in technology. I use electronic trading. I got started with the Globe External years ago. And you know, I still know things about electronic trading after all these years. A lot of people never knew, never discovered, so I spent a lot of time studying the art of electronic trading. Here are the tools I use to overcome fear. Roadmap software. If you go back and look at the roadmap software, you can see I mapped out a trade. The trend is higher, and I'm just about to kick off into a real buy here, and it should go to about 108 from here. And hopefully, I can make about a thousand dollars a contract when that happens. That's what the software looks like. We've got a horse race here to help in the first hour of trading. That's a pretty neat little tool. We've got a lot of tools that we created over the years for the different time segments that people trade around the globe, whether you're in Australia or anywhere else. Here's some key features. The custom page, the way it sets up, it starts with the opening philosophy. Remember on crude, I said, look at crude, it's setting up. If you go back and look at our live roadmap, I looked over there and saw the 106.84, I set my buy stop at 106.96, and the rest is how you get on the right side. Remember that opening day sheet I gave you? Works the same way in the short term. This is the beautiful thing about trading, if you learn this stuff. ETR page keeps track of it during the night. The compass, the horse race, right here identifies stocks. If I'm trading stocks, I can put stocks in here and find out what the leading stocks are right out of the gate. 
Who saw the uh, Belmont where uh, California Chrome lost? Who saw that? If I'd have had the if I'd have had the software on it, I could have told you that he didn't get off to a good start because it would have been red. Here's another little tool we got inside the roadmap to relate the different markets with each other. I hate to keep doing this to you, but how much am I up on my crude right now? Y'all see where it's at? How much money is that? So if you ever said, hey, I saw Tom Busby give a webinar and he traded live, I go, that's Tom. I love this stuff, folks. I love it. Okay. Let me ask a question. Am I reaching some of you out there? Is, is my approach a little different for you than a lot of people that, that you hear from? Am I starting to, you know, ring your bell a little bit and say, hey, maybe I could learn how to do this? All right, my approach. I know the seasonal market's is straight. I can tell you that tomorrow should be an up day. Rocks, my exit is 108, okay? I got about another 50 cents to go on this trade. Heck, I got a full day in front of me, but I had multiple contracts on, so I could sell any at any time to guarantee my win on the trade, okay? And I would sell some right now, but clearly, Crude's rocking and rolling, isn't it? So I planned a week out. I do this every Sunday night for my subscribers. Yeah, I have moved my stop up to 107.19, Kenneth. That's where I got my stop. I'm just curious, did anybody take this trade that's listening to me tonight? Did anybody make this trade and make some money off of this webinar? I'm just curious if, you know, whether you did it or not. Maybe the next time you listen to me, if I give a trade, you might take it. Every Sunday night, I have a weekly planning session. It starts at 8. I lay out the entire week. My week calls for an update on Friday. probabilities, the reason that it calls for that, the probability, look at Friday's probabilities for being higher. Everybody see those numbers? That's very strong coming into the mark. Remember that Google trade I told you I was holding on to? Watch Google tomorrow if I'm right on the market and it goes higher. And you see Google take out 561, you'll see a lot of people making a bunch of money off that analysis. having fun with y'all tonight. All right, tomorrow we got news at 7.30, consumer sentiment at 8.55. See those red stars I was talking about? That's market moving news at 7.30 in the morning. Now, here's the thing I'm really good at. I really plan out my day in front of a computer. As a matter of fact, I've really gone mobile this year. I do I do probably 80% of my trades through the mobile operation. I have the correct tools to minimize the time spent analyzing the market. All right, Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, I will be using technology to overcome fear. You can sign up at this link if you would like an invitation. We'll send you a recorded copy if you can't if you can't be there. That'll be uh, Saturday morning at nine o'clock. Now, Adam, if they fill out a survey, let's give in a copy of the 7-Eleven rule. If they fill out a survey, this is something that'll help you in your trading. 
it's a two-hour video that we put together. And so if they fill out that survey, we will act, we'll definitely, there's a survey link Adam posted. Fill that out, and we'll give you a two-hour tape on a rule that will change your trade. It's a very good rule. It's called the 7-Eleven rule. Okay? Yana, I think I'm pretty well at the end of uh, of my slides. Let me answer any questions. Why don't I just open it up for general questions? All right, let me go back to my oil trade. Does everybody see oil right now? How much am I up on that trade right now? How much am I up money-wise per contract? Kenneth, does this kind of stuff turn you on? You and Tony? I mean, right in real time, you got to see Tom Busby do his thing. This is a trade that's, uh, I love this trade. I like making these things like this. And what's our target? There you go. That was our plan. How much did we risk? Uh, Kenneth, it goes back to a couple things. Let me ask some questions since I got a little time. Where did crude open the year? If you had that sheet, you would know. It opened the year at 98 bucks. It opened the year at 98 bucks. So, using the DTI approach, I would look for crude to go higher. Now at 106. Where did crude open the month at? You could look at our roadmap, and you could see it opened the month at 102.92. So we're higher than the year. High than the year. We're higher than the month, right? How about the week? 102.78. We're higher than the week. And then you get down, are you higher than the day? We open at 106.94, currently 107.53, we're higher. So everything is higher from its opening price. So the bar that you're looking at, if this is the opening, looks like that to me. And that tells me to be long. How far will it travel? About a dollar and a quarter in a day. We get that from our roadmap software, and we plug it in, we do our projection. So these are the kind of questions you ought to ask, not only about crude, but about anything else. For example, if you do this same scenario on Apple computer, you will find out it should go higher. All right, let's go back and do some administrative work. Uh, if you sign up for the webinar here, there's the sign up for the Saturday webinar. Who's going to come Saturday? Let me ask that question. Who's, who's interested enough to come this Saturday? It'll last about an hour, and I'll tell you about a mobile product I got called T-Buzz. I think you'll love it. And then if you fill out that survey that Adam posted in there, We'll give you a two-hour video on a rule that will really help you. Hello, Elizabeth. People love love the T-Buzz product. It's a text trade service. People love it. All right, folks. Jan, I got 28 minutes. Unless Adam's got another presentation he wants me to give, I don't know what else anybody wants me to talk about. Thanks, Paul. That's awful nice to say. Are you coming on after me, Paul? Yana, who's coming on after me? 
Uh, we have we have two guys from ITEN Research, a new presenter, someone who hasn't presented at the Trading Pub in the past, and I see that they are logged in. The question remains whether they're ready. Um, I've tried to reach them, and I'm. Um, Adam, do we have any video that we could show them right now? Is there any video that we could show them? Could you? I mean. Could you show in my Sunday night planning session? I don't know if you can show that or not. Oh, they're almost ready, David. How much more time do you need? Oh, Nadex. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Steve. In fact, tomorrow I'll be doing a Nadex trade on the on the indexes, and Nadex. Thanks. I forgot about it, but Nadex is a binary option. And what I will do tomorrow, and I'll set this trade about 7 o'clock in the morning, and the way it works is, uh, let me bring a Nadex up to show you. It would be easy to do. Let me go to Nadex's website. And guys, when y'all get ready, just tell me. I can exit out. But... Uh, Nadex. Matter of fact, on your end, go to nadex.com. Okay. All right, here's Nadex, okay? You trade fast with binary options. Nadex binaries, okay, are very liquid. You can put orders in. And so the way it works is, okay, the way you put orders in is like, for example, if I thought the S&P was going higher tomorrow, I would look for an S&P right, right around where we're currently trading, and I would buy the Nadex binary. And as long as I closed above that price, that I'd get paid an equal amount of what I paid. If I paid 50 cents, if I paid 30 cents, I'd get paid 70 cents. It all works off of a dollar. Okay, that's the way it works. But uh, Adam, the last thing I'd like you to do, why don't you give them a password into our trade room tomorrow? They can come visit at any time and see us do live trading in our trade room. Why don't you send in a password or type that in there with a the link and it will turn over to David let him take over. Okay? Uh, bring it into, bring, why don't you bring it into my TWT room, okay, where I'll be trading. Y'all want to come in my room where I'm trading tomorrow? I'll give you a password in there and you can just come in there and watch me do my thing tomorrow morning. Okay. Just tell me in the morning when I ask if you're new, that you're new, okay? All right, I'm going to turn it over to Paul. Let's go back one more time to our crude oil. How much money am I up on my crude oil right now? $660 bucks per contract. I think that's a good way to end. Go while they're still clapping. Take it away, guys. Y'all can have it. Tom, thank you for sharing your...